развитие науки и техники позволило нам создать мощную, качественно новую материально-техническую базу. Наше превосходство в новейших видах военной техники – это факт, товарищи, а факты – упрямая вещь. Our principal long-term problem continues to be the Soviet Union. Whether we like it or not, the Soviet leadership seems intent on challenging us to a major military competition. Whatever the motive behind it, the challenge is serious. We must not underestimate it. Space, an infinite ocean. With Project Mercury, this ocean was open to man. Air Force Systems Command is playing a large role in our country's space program. Transportation, gathering worldwide weather information, global navigation systems, communication systems that reach round the Earth and into space, and surveillance of objects in near space and deep space. Let's look at some of these programs and their defense applications. Air Force participation in the National Space Transportation System includes providing both launch and recovery facilities and planning for Department of Defense space shuttle operations. At Vandenberg Air Force Base, the AFSC facilities for processing payloads in the space shuttle vehicle are under construction. This is the location of the launch pad payload service tower, control center, and associated facilities. The space shuttle vehicle consists of the large external tank, two solid rocket boosters, and the orbiter itself. The space shuttle vehicle will be launched from this complex when polar orbits are needed for the mission. AFSC's Arnold Engineering Development Center has completed wind tunnel tests, documenting stability and control surface effectiveness of the space shuttle. The model is one of the most precisely detailed ever built. It includes surface features as small as the cargo door hinge line, and special attention was paid to the area around the three main engine exhaust nozzles. This is the largest orbiter model ever installed in the two wind tunnels used in the tests, sponsored by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. The tests at AEDC examined that portion of the orbiter's re-entry as it slowed from eight times the speed of sound to one quarter that speed. They also included in-flight maneuvers that might be needed to correct its flight path. These wind tunnel tests offer considerable advantages in safety, as well as time and dollars savings. Air Force participation with NASA for the space shuttle also includes developing and producing an inertial upper stage for positioning payloads that must go beyond the shuttle's 600-mile altitude capability. The Air Force Flight Test Center at Edwards Air Force Base provided support for testing the Enterprise during its piggyback flights and the first landing tests, including landings on a concrete runway. During the operational phase, the orbiter can use either Vandenberg Air Force Base or Cape Canaveral, Florida. Both facilities will have a 15,000-foot runway for orbiter recovery. It lands much like a conventional aircraft, but without power. With a potential for more than 100 missions in its lifetime, each shuttle will show substantial cost reductions and a potential to significantly enhance the effectiveness of Department of Defense space missions. Weather is crucial to defense planning and operations. Knowledge of current conditions and predictions of immediate and future conditions worldwide. Before the space age, real-time weather information from some parts of the world was totally unavailable to the Department of Defense. To satisfy the need for precise, reliable, secure, and timely weather data, AFSC developed the Defense Meteorological Satellite. The program office is at AFSC's Space and Missile Systems Organization. 
the Defense Meteorological Satellite Program interfaces with seven major contractors, the Joint Services, and six major Air Force commands, with the Military Airlift Command's Air Weather Service as the primary user. The system consists of two satellites in a 450 nautical mile polar orbit. They circle the Earth every 101 minutes. The satellites collect vertical temperature and moisture information as well as ozone content. In addition, visual and infrared pictures of Earth and its cloud cover are collected. This information is stored for transmission to terminals at Fairchild Air Force Base, Washington, or Loring Air Force Base, Maine. They relay it to Global Weather Central at Offutt Air Force Base, Nebraska. Air transportable ground terminals are available for use anywhere in the world to support tactical operations with real-time weather information. The Navy plans readout stations on 12 of its aircraft carriers by the early 1980s. A shipboard terminal has already been tested aboard the USS Constellation. At Global Weather Central, the weather information is stored as digital data in a computer. It's retrieved as film strips showing cloud cover and topography. The analyst determines weather conditions at that moment. At the ground terminals, the film strip shows local weather as recently as within the past five minutes. A forthcoming generation of spacecraft will provide even more refined and more reliable data, including precipitation rates and sea states. In addition to its global military use, the Defense Meteorological Satellite Program helps civilian weather agencies hold down costs by providing weather data through the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. The Defense Meteorological Satellite Program is an efficient, cost-effective, and highly successful means of supplying quality weather data on a global scale in support of our nation's military requirements. The NAVSTAR Global Positioning System will be a worldwide network of satellites transmitting precise jam-resistant navigational signals. These signals are deciphered by special receivers to determine longitude, latitude, altitude, speed, and time. 24 satellites will orbit the Earth every 12 hours to provide highly accurate and continuous global coverage to the Army, Marines, Air Force, and the Navy. With this system, a ship could determine its position on any ocean in the world within 30 feet. A tank unit could accurately determine local time for a coordinated attack. Additional applications include precise weapons delivery during inclement weather, improved approaches in poor visibility, accurate aerial refueling rendezvous, and more efficient search and rescue operations. Monitor stations around the world would continually gather satellite signals. During the 1980s, the NAVSTAR system will provide an accurate, cost-effective global positioning system. Modern military operations require a worldwide strategic communication system. The Defense Communications Agency is continuing development of a strategic military space communication system called the Defense Satellite Communications System. The Air Force Systems Command Space and Missile Systems Organization is responsible for the program from development of the satellite to final orbiting and checkout. When the satellite is operational, it's turned over to the Defense Communications Agency. The Defense Satellite Communication System consists of four satellites, one over the Eastern Atlantic, and one over the Western Pacific. A third satellite is located over the Eastern Pacific, and there is a fourth over the Indian Ocean. The satellites, each with a 10,000 mile diameter view, cover the Earth except for certain polar areas. The communications satellites are in synchronous orbits, thus from the ground they appear to be stationary, turning as the Earth turns. 
The communications equipment handles 1,300 voice channels with a secure command capability for the satellite command and control signals. Information is received and transmitted by any combination of the four antennas. The narrow beam antennas each cover an area about 1,000 miles in diameter. They can be pointed at desired locations by ground command. The two wide beam antennas each cover an area more than 10,000 miles in diameter or the side of the earth facing the satellite. Power for the satellite is supplied by solar cells. Three nickel cadmium batteries supply power during eclipses when the sun's rays are blocked from the solar cells. Ground commands fire jets on the satellite to maintain its attitude and position in orbit. Once in orbit, tests of the satellite communications and command and control systems are conducted through the AFSC Air Force Satellite Control Facilities Satellite Test Center at Sunnyvale, California and its Camp Parks facility near Oakland, California. When the tests are completed, the satellites are turned over to the Defense Communications Agency where they serve as a continuous link joining national command authorities, the Department of Defense, and operating commands. For example, a satellite over the Eastern Atlantic funnels communications from Europe to the Western Hemisphere. Each military service operates terminals in the worldwide network of 30 ground stations. Program development continues with the new higher capacity satellite designed to fulfill communications needs and to meet expected jamming conditions in the 1980s. The Defense Satellite Communication System provides a complete global communications network serving our nation's strategic defense communications needs. AFSC's Space and Missile Systems Organization in cooperation with our NATO allies placed the NATO-3 satellite communication system in orbit. While this system serves NATO primarily, some communications capabilities are shared by our Department of Defense. The NATO-3 system consists of satellites which provide communications coverage for all NATO operational areas. There is an increasing need for secure satellite communications and for satellites immune to interference. The Lincoln Laboratory Experimental Satellite Program called LESS-8 and 9 is a joint Navy Air Force effort. These LESS-8 and 9 satellites demonstrated advanced communication technology using ultra-high and extremely high frequencies. The extremely high frequencies, or EHF, are used between satellites, providing relative freedom from either natural or hostile interference. Ultra-high frequencies, or UHF, are used by the satellites to talk to the force elements. The system was tested with existing FSATCOM assets. Because their orbits are synchronous, they repeat nearly the same ground patterns. After launch and initial testing, one of the satellites was moved west for further tests. Each satellite has an Earth coverage area about 9,000 miles in diameter. In addition to talking to each other, LESS 8 and 9 can link surface terminals with voice or digital data communications. AFSC's Electronic Systems Division sponsored satellite design and construction. Experimental prototype surface terminals were developed by both the Navy and the Air Force. Fixed ground terminals, transportable ground terminals, terminals on ships, and aircraft. Here's an example of operational capability. An Airborne Command Post type terminal sends messages to the force element through LESS-8 using the EHF band. LESS-8 translates and retransmits the messages on UHF down to the force element aircraft. The same concept was used with the Vandenberg Launch Control Center as the force element. The return message was sent by UHF from the force element to either satellite for processing and retransmission on EHF to the airborne command post type terminal. Demonstrating a force direction and report back situation, Messages went from the airborne command post to a submarine and back by various combinations of routes. For example, aircraft to less 8 to less 9 and down to the submarine. The reply went by UHF direct to the aircraft. 
Less A to 9 handled conferences among command posts using combinations of direct and satellite to satellite communications. These communications proved to be essentially error free in both voice and digital data modes. These techniques can be used in the design of future generations of satellite systems, such as one to support single integrated operational planning in the event of a general war. Keeping track of objects in orbit is an increasingly important surveillance task. Since the 1950s, more than 16 nations have placed satellites in orbit around the Earth. A prime function of the Aerospace Defense Command is to detect, track, and evaluate the mission of space platforms that could pose potential threat to the security of the United States. Large phased array radars such as Cobra Dane and Pave Paws detect, identify, and track up to 200 objects simultaneously. Another satellite surveillance capability is the ground-based electro-optical deep space surveillance system. Special telescopes and motion picture cameras are used by the Air Defense Command in tracking satellites at long ranges. Advanced systems are being developed using telescopes and electro-optical systems. Satellites can be detected among the millions of stars that form the space background. For example, there's a satellite moving in this star field. It's difficult to find, even for a trained operator. Here it is. Using special techniques, the motion of the stars is frozen, and time is compressed. Now the star field looks like this. The moving satellite shows up clearly as the time compression is repeated. There are image enhancement techniques that can improve optical observation of spacecraft. Here, for example, is Skylab in orbit. The image is improved using image enhancement techniques. The Soviets are actively engaged in the development and flight testing of an anti-satellite capability which could threaten the survivability of some of our space systems. This situation raises the specter of space warfare as a new dimension of conflict. To protect our extensive space systems, we're deploying attack warning sensors on some of our satellites and making a major effort to bring together all space surveillance data. The underlying goal of the U.S. national space policy is that space must be preserved for peaceful use to the benefit of mankind. Air Force principles relating to space operations are totally consistent with this policy. With man's thirst for exploration, for knowledge and understanding, space is an infinite frontier. T.S. Eliot wrote, we shall not cease from exploration, and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time.